Rendering in Maya can be done through the user interface or it can be done through the command line. When you render through the user interface, you set up your render settings and you go to render, batch render, and execute the command there. And it will start to render your scene according to the settings that you've set up here. This is fine. There are a couple of downsides to this. First, uh, the program Maya itself is using some of your system resources, memory, and CPU processing power. But it also uses an entire Maya license. So, for example, if we have 15 Maya licenses in the lab, then when you render from the user interface like this, it uses an entire Maya license, so one of the 15. Rather than rendering this way, we can render from the command line. So this is slightly different on the PC or on a Windows machine, but it's all documented here in the help files under um, command line renderer. So you can just search for it there. It's a little more straightforward on the Mac because they set up the pathways to the different commands for you. On the PC, you have to spend some time doing that, but only for the first time you use the command line renderer. So on the Mac, we have a terminal window like this. Now this is uh, where we execute our commands, but by default, we can't use the built-in terminal uh, from the operating system. Instead, we've got to navigate to the Applications folder. And you can find Maya here, and right above it you find Maya Terminal. And here you can launch your renders. Let me just make this a little bigger so we can see. So the command for rendering is simply render, and then you have to follow it with flags that are indicated by a dash before a, usually a letter or a truncated word. So dash H is the short form for help on the render command. So we can click that and we can see all the different flags that are possible to control the render. However, there are only a few that are really important, although I recommend you take a look to um, see what's possible. It might be useful in a situation. I've got a list of what I find to be the most important render flags. So let's just go down to the bottom of the command line here. It's a little big. So we can use some of these. So, if we want to render this file here, I've got the project set. It's in my projects folder in a project called Osteoclast, and the file is called Tumor. So, I would type in, not Redner, but Render. And then the first important flag I want is the proj flag, and that just sets the project. So, then it will look at the workspace.mel file and then know where to look for textures, for example, and to save out your renders. So I could type the path in here, but the simpler way of doing it is simply to uh, navigate to where these files are, where your project is. So Maya Projects, and I call this Osteoclast. So I can just select this folder and drag it here, and it will type in the path. I can start the Start, set the start frame by dash S, and let's say I want to start on frame 20, dash E, end frame, and frame 300, for example. Now, you don't have to use these flags. If we go back into Maya here for a second, if I saved the, the file with the settings set up the way I wanted them, here in, in this case it's from 1 to, let's say, 300, and just leave it at 10, then it will just default to whatever you have there. But if you want to override these settings, you can use the flags. Okay, so that's S and E. If you want to change the camera that's being used to render, you can type cam and then 
the name of your camera. Mine's already set, so I don't need to do that. But if you had more than one camera in a scene and you were rendering on two different computers and you wanted one computer to render from one camera and one from the other, on each computer you could set cam for, you know, shot one and then the other one could be uh, shot two or whatever you've named your cameras. So it could be useful in that way. Similarly, if you've got different render layers, like I have here, I've got a main and a occlusion layer, I can type RL and force it just to do one of them. Again, if you're rendering on more than one computer, this can be useful to divide up, uh, to have a division of labor between them. However, if you don't put that flag in, whatever one has the green check mark beside it will render. A more important one that you have to include is this one, dash MR colon RT. If we look in Maya, when we go to render, batch render, it automatically will use all the render cores. So on this machine there are eight render cores and it's going to use all of them. If you use the command line render, um, by default it will just use either one or two of them, I can't remember. Uh, so here you have to force it to use all eight. If you're on a machine that has more, if you've got a higher-end machine that has 24 cores, for example, you can force it to use all of those cores. So you probably don't want to have anything else running on the machine. You just want to dedicate it to rendering to be most efficient. So I'll leave mine at eight. Now I've rendered this out previously, so I'm just going to go in and delete those renders. Again, some documents. Maya projects. Osteoclast, and I've already got these renders, so let me just delete these. And we'll leave this open. And the last thing we have to do here is to put in the name of the file. And I know it's called tumor.ma, and that has to be here in the Maya folder, tumor.ma. And then we can execute the command. And so if it doesn't work, you'll get a command saying, uh, or a response saying command not recognized or something. But here, it is working and it's going to start going through the render. There are warnings here, but it's nothing to worry about, unless it is, but in this case it's not. And I can see the renders being written here. If I want to stop this render, I simply just have to quit the terminal window. So I'm going to terminal quit, whatever. And when it's done, we're almost on the last one here, it just says scene tumor.ma completed.